was going to say Lipa Bray, but this is not Lipa Bray. Hmm. And uh, the Lipa Bray. Lipa Bray. Lipa Hey guys, it's Jay and today I'm here with my November wrap-up video. I read a total of four books this month, which I think is actually pretty good considering the fact that November is like the month of assignments in university. It's like paper after paper after project after project and I was like dying, but I ended up reading four books, which I'm proud of. So without further ado, let us get started. I actually didn't really enjoy two of the books and I also really enjoyed two of the books. So it was a fairly even reading month for me. The first book that I read in the month of November is Updrift by Erin Stevens and this is the first book in the Mare Chronicles and I actually received this book as part of a tour that Casey and Books and Let's Talk Books runs. So I'll leave both their links down below if you want to check them out because they're both amazing and I love them. I have a full review of this up on my channel so you guys can check that out if you're interested in my full thoughts on the book. But I didn't like this as much as I wanted to. I ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It's about mermaids if you couldn't guess by, you know, the cover with the mermaid tail on it. But I think it's more of a 3 star for most people, but the dialogue in the book really irritated me, so I ended up dropping a star, and I also just found the pacing really, really slow. So nothing really happened until the last, like, 100 pages or so, so that's why I dropped it. But I think a lot of people would enjoy this book, so give it a try if you're interested. The second book that I read, I adore. I love it so, so much. I also received it as part of the tours that Casey Ann and Let's Talk Book runs. So, again, links down below. But it is Vinyl by Sophia Elaine Hansen. Honestly, this book, I did not go into it thinking that I would like it because the synopsis on the back is so confusing. Like, I was literally like, what is going on? I don't understand anything that this book is saying. And it takes a while for things to start unfolding. But once you're into the book, like, you are into this book. If you don't know by now, I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I've been talking about it on Twitter nonstop. I'm obsessed with it. Sophia is one of the nicest human beings in the entire world. And I'm going to have a full review of this up on my channel on December 4th. So I'll link it up above. Probably won't come up until it's actually up, but it'll be up there by December 4th. But honestly, read this book. Oh my god. So good. The next book that I read in the month of November is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. She's the author of Gone Girl. I'm sure you all know that. But I loved this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. After a brief stay in a psychotic hospital, Camille Preaker is a newspaper journalist in Chicago. She gets assigned to a story in her hometown, Wind Gap, and she has to go there and cover the story that is about two girls who were murdered. Camille finds herself at her mother's house, who she hasn't actually talked to in a couple of years. The longer that Camille stays in Wind Gap, the more she begins to relate to these two preteen girls who were murdered, and she starts to remember things from her childhood that she doesn't really want to remember. As Camille tries to navigate between her mother, her half-sister who she barely knows, and the investigation, she soon realizes that Wingate might not exactly be the best for her mental health. I really enjoyed it, but I was able to call the murderer, which is why I dropped half a star. Because, you know, your girl don't like calling murderers, but... I found it pretty easy to call the murderers, so that was kind of disappointing, but I still really enjoyed it nonetheless. It is very gory and, like, gross at times, which, you know, also, your girl can't handle her blood very well. So I did end up dropping the half star for that as well. Which doesn't really make sense because thrillers are my favorite, which there's usually blood and gore in thrillers, so why your girl always drops half a star because of it? You will never know. It's the logic of JN. I'm sorry. It doesn't make sense. We should all know this by now. I also loved how every single character was more disturbed than the next character. Like, it just made it so much fun to read. And the final book that I read, I really did not like at all. <laughs> it's called White is for Witching and is by Helen Oyemi or something like that. I'm probably saying that crazily wrong. But I ended up giving it a 1 out of 5 star. It just was not my cup of tea. I saw the book over on Joss's channel from Scribbles Reads. So I'll leave her link down below. Hi Joss, you're amazing. I love you. It sounded so cool when she described it and then I got to it and I read it and I was just like, like what is happening? It was just really confusing. But the book follows Miranda and Elliot Silver. They're twins and they just lost their mother. Miranda ends up developing this rare eating disorder called pica and it's basically where you eat like non-food items. So her form of pica is she eats chalk and plastic. 
Miranda Elliott and Luke, their dad, move to Dover into the house that's been in their family for generations, which ends up being haunted by the generations of the silver woman before. I know, confusing, right? The house seems to have this strange hold on Miranda and it makes her sicker than she already is. But as I said, I was honestly so confused through the entire story. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't feel like there was any plot development at all. It kind of just kept going and just the way that it was set up was really confusing to me. I found the narrative really hard to follow because it would switch between four different characters. Like it would switch between Miranda, Elliot, or who is like Miranda's love interest, and then the house. So like, I don't know, it was just weird to me. It would switch perspectives, it wouldn't tell you that it was switching perspectives, so you would have to like figure it out halfway through. Like, I don't know, it was just really confusing to me. I didn't really like it that much. I also found Miranda's character to be like super cliche. Basically it was like the mentally ill girl who looks so sick and frail, but everybody falls in love with her and she's just so extremely beautiful and it's just no. like. She's clearly sick. Why are you trying to romanticize it by saying she's so beautiful and blah blah blah? Like, she looks sick and frail. It tells you that, like, 20 times in the book. So, like, stop. Just stop. Alright, guys. So, those were the four books I read in November. Let me know down below if you've read any of them. Definitely check out Vinyl. Please read that book. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye.